Jujutsu Kaisen as a series is filled with multiple cool things, from its fantastic character progression to its somber and enticing writing. But I think that one of the things we love to discuss the most as a community is curse techniques. Whether we debate whether the translation was correct, whether we debate how that would work, what other abilities somebody could get out of the curse technique, there always just seems to be something more to it. And I had an idea and an interesting question. What would happen if we were to gift the four disaster curses abilities to four sorcerers? In this case, I have to think it would be rather interesting. I mean, taking four of those abilities, and I would assume giving the same amount of cursed energy to somebody, is a monumental upset. And there were two different ways that one could do that, and I think I found a unique solution to both. But before we begin, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so I can deliver more anime content to you, and leave a like on the video if you did in fact like the content. Okay, so the premise of this, of giving another character somebody else's power, is hardly new in the anime community. But in this case, I was left with an interesting choice, because Jujutsu Kaisen can break its characters down into one of two areas. You are important because you have a curse technique that lets you keep up with the story, or you are beloved by fans, but you don't really bring anything useful. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of wanted to do both. I think there is a more practical essence to giving characters that we know, care for, and have a significant impact on the story, but just didn't have techniques to keep up with it. And I'm probably going to focus more on that, but towards the end of the video, I would definitely, and am definitely, going to give my thoughts and feelings on which characters who are, let's just say, main characters, their abilities, and what I think who would receive what, and what they would be best at. So, let's get into it. Now, I think that the first curse that we should cover is actually the one that we've probably seen the most of at this point, and that is Disaster Plants. And Disaster Plants is actually kind of an interesting ability because it's very empathetic. It's almost counterintuitive in a lot of ways to a lot of curse techniques. It relies on being harmonious with nature in some ways. And as an interesting concept, I think that there are only a number of characters that could really make use of that idea. And the character that I think that would make the best use of it would actually be Panda. Now, I think the interesting thing about giving Panda this is that he doesn't really have any techniques. Yes, he has the different cursed corpse modes that he switches through. But as we've kind of proven, the only one of those that was ever useful was Gorilla Mode. And with the, with the second one obviously being a little underwhelming in the form of Triceratops Mode, I just kind of can't help but wonder what would happen if Panda was given a curse technique. And this one fits him perfectly. A, as a panda, he's already pretty in touch with nature. But Disaster Plants does seem to make its wielder, or because its wielder is this way they have it, very empathetic, very uh, drawn to their teammates and taking care of them. We saw that with Hanami when he took care of Jogo, actually rescuing him from Satoru Gojo. And we see it again a couple other times throughout the series where he will repeatedly defend his teammates. So I think that this is a good power for Panda. Panda has definitely shown in the past that he is dedicated to protecting the other students around him, and he strives to understand everyone. I think the Disaster Plants fits perfectly, not to mention it gives Panda a good amount of ranged options, which is something that he's traditionally fallen a little short on. So yeah, I think this fits really well. Now, I think that in terms of abilities that are useful and characters who we really like and want to see more of, I think that a good matching here is Disaster Flames being assigned to Miwa. Now, that doesn't quite make sense because Miwa is not overly aggressive and she doesn't really have a lot of outbursts of anger throughout the series that much, but we haven't really seen her a lot after certain events in the Shibuya incident, and there is implied to be a deep well of at least resentment that she has picked up along the way throughout the series. And I think that giving her Disaster Flames really just bolsters her one weakness, which is a lack of a curse technique. If she pairs it with her sword fighting ability, which there's no reason to think she couldn't, she's like a stronger version of Ogi Zenin, you know, Maki and Mai's dad, but she has far of range attacks, she can create little those little bug servant things to do reconnaissance or to attack separately, I mean, she essentially has her standard kit with the katana and fighting, but now she's extremely dangerous because she manipulates fire. 
I just think that this is a good fit, and we do see a couple different times that when she gets really upset, she can have outbursts of anger, which somewhat fits with the theme. So, there are two Disaster Curse abilities left, and I think I'll save the best for last. So, this case, I'm going to go ahead and give Disaster Tides to Karara. Now, that probably seems a little weird because Karara already has a good ability. Love Rendezvous is not bad by any stretch of the word, and they're not exactly the most prominent character. But I kind of feel like they should be because they're like the last remaining student in Jujutsu High that really doesn't get to do a lot. They're really listed as being a support character. And this would pretty much boost Karara right out of that. Especially if you set this in the same setting that Panda has, you know, Disaster Plants, I definitely think that Kirara gets a significant boost from this. Now, they don't really use Shikigami, so that aspect of the power would probably be interesting to see with them, how they would go about it. But the other things that we see Dagon use this ability with, which is mostly pushing people away with water, and pushing them around, and sometimes using it offensively, like for cutting and stuff. That fits perfectly with Love Wonderview. If anything, it's a more flexible version of that, creating barriers, moving people around the battlefield. So... I think that that fits exceptionally well. Plus, this ability would allow Karara to fight alongside, you know, Hakari with, like, no restriction. So I think that would work really well and could be an interesting pairing on the battlefield. I think, though, when it comes to this last pairing, I hope you'll agree, it kind of fits perfectly. I think that if anyone should have gotten any of these disaster abilities, like, permanently... Mai would have been a perfect recipient for Idol Transfiguration. Hear me out. Now, Mai as a character is important, but not overly popular, because she's obviously supposed to be Maki's resentful and bitter sister. But the reason she's so resentful is because of her permanent bond to Maki and the fact that she feels very underpowered. And I mean she is, partially due to the, blonde, the bond between the two sapping her strength as well as limiting her sister and forcing them both to basically enter the world of Jujutsu. But it also keeps her from really hitting her stride with construction. And because she can't hit her stride with construction, she can't be as powerful as another character whom we've seen with construction that really just showed how powerful that ability could really be. But if you were to give my idol transfiguration... A couple of interesting things happen. One, she can very easily separate their bond. Now, this does happen in the manga, obviously, and it's quite painful for both sisters to have this happen. Her having this does not have to be a negative experience in any way. She could simply touch herself or herself and her sister and possibly change that bond. Maybe even separating it outright or making it non-restrictive. We know that you can skirt a pact with Idol Transfiguration because we see Mahito do it for, you know, Kukichi Muda. And because of that, I think that this gives a lot of opportunity for the sisters to, instead of being adversaries, become a prominent team. I think that the fact this is also a special grade ability pretty much would make my Maki's equal once they're separated. She can fight with her sister or with the other students, actively defending them and keeping them safe. I would also go as far as to say that I think that Idol Transfiguration and Construction are very similar. She can't affect inanimate objects, but if it's alive, she can. She can heal herself, she can heal others, and she can make objects. Now, Mahito can split himself up, he can, you know, form his body into objects, artifacts. That's kind of the basis of Construction anyway. This amount of understanding and idea could play perfectly with a power that she already had but couldn't use properly. I think that it makes a lot of sense to give this to her, and it would be very interesting to see what avenue she would take with it. Now, she was also probably more of a long-range fighter originally, but with this, she doesn't necessarily have to be, because she now has an ability that can keep herself and others safe. Just a thought. And if you were wondering, in the case of if we had to give these powers to main characters, I would definitely say that I think Megami should get Disaster Tides. He's already a Shikigami expert, and... Water float works perfectly in sync with what shadows already do for him, so he really wouldn't experience a lot of changeover in terms of his strategy and his combat usage of the ability. And that actually pairs pretty well. It just gives him actually an unlimited number of Shikigami. Uh, for Disaster Flames, I would actually give it to Nobara. 
and I think that this is pretty funny because it fits her personality really well. Like, I love the fact that Straw Doll is a creative application. It has so much to be overpowered in a lot of ways. It works perfectly for her. But if you were to give her just a special grade ability, this works perfectly. She's already kind of a hothead, but she is creative with her abilities, and I think she would get far more out of it than Jogo ever did. So that's an, that's an A+. Plus. And then lastly... Okay, so originally I had been planning to give Yuji Disaster Flames and then give Idol Transfiguration to Yuda because that made a lot of sense to me. But then in one of my comments for one of my videos, the one about the top five sorcerers that got the wrong technique, you can check it out here. One of my commenters, whose comment I will put up on the screen right now, said something interesting. They said that in addition to the clone technique, essentially, another ability that would have been great for Yuji was having Idle Transfiguration. And I think that if Yuji has Idle Transfiguration, there's actually a lot of room for him to maneuver. As I discussed with Mai, it can be a creatively driven power. The ability to turn your body into objects, augment it as necessary, and heal it. But I think especially with Yuji, we would see more usage out of healing people as well. It's not like Reverse Curse Technique. It can actually heal things that Reverse Curse Technique can't touch. And that would be a perfect role for Yuji, especially somebody who doesn't want people to die ahead of their time. And as an offensive power, we have seen it, it can be devastating, which fits him really well. Which really only leaves Disaster Plants. And to be honest, there since there's only really three main characters in this series, at least three ones that I would assign these powers to, I would just go ahead and say that Disaster Plants could be given to Panda again, because he needs the upgrade like a lot of other characters just don't, so that would work fine. But why don't you guys let me know in the comments what you thought and what powers you would have given all of these characters, or who you would have assigned them to.